So now we're gonna talk about gears. For those of you guys with a Dana 30, or actually it's what, the Aventec 186 nowadays That's is what, right. mm -hmm. what they're calling it. Same thing basically. This is the ring and pinion that you would get with one. Now, the benefit of going with a ProRock 44 JL is that this is what you get instead. If you come over here, you can see the size difference is significant. What, what is the dimension on this, you know? Well, let's take a look. 7.18. Versus? Versus, this is eight and a half. Well, that's a big difference. Yeah. Now, for those of you guys who have Rubicon, uh, the gear sets that come in them are actually pretty big. They're the M210 gears. They're about the same size, but how long have you guys been using this gear set? When we just did the Prog 44, we decided to stay with the JK gear set because we've just had no failures to speak of. And those are in heavier cars with guys running just as big a tire, you know, deep gear ratios and Rubicons, et cetera. So we just felt very confident. The other, the other thing is, is that while uh, the Vantec gear is a good gear, there's really only one supplier of it. I'm sure there'll be imported imitations in the near future, but you know this gear, you know, is available from Dana. It's also available from some other U.S. gear suppliers. It's also available from a lot of import gear suppliers, and we're very selective about the gears we use, and we're just very happy with the performance, the quiet running, the clean setup, the good patterns we get out of these. So. Uh, we decided to stay with that. There was no compelling reason to change to the Advantech gear. It would limit our sources, it would potentially increase the cost, and we just didn't see that it was going to add any benefit. The other question that I wanted to know is, if I wanted to get something other than the electric e-locker that came on the okay. JL, uh, are there other options available for the Advantech versus what we know is available for the Pro Rock 44? Yeah, so right now, you know, because the, uh, the JL is fairly new, you have limited choices in terms of differentials. What's available? Well, the factory differential, that's what's <laughs> available if you want a selectable locker. So I'm sure there'll be more lockers coming out on the market, but that may take time. Uh, there's also, you know, quite honestly, as I've seen new lockers emerge, it usually takes a while for them to shake out a little bit. Whereas all the parts we're using here, we've been supplying these in the thousands uh, since 2008. That's, so that's a time. really long time. So what, what kind of locker choices would we be uh, of having? Of course you could have uh, ARBs, one of our most popular choices, Eaton E-lockers. Uh, those are the two I would say most popular. Uh, but there's also uh, an ECTED device, which is uh, another selectable locking diff. And then there's also the uh, Ox Locker. Ox Locker, yeah, yes. Yeah, I wanted to mention the Ox Locker. So that's a lot of people really love the Ox Locker. And, uh, and it's a good quality piece too. So there's lots of choices. So another thing that you guys might want to know about, for those of you guys who've seen my drive shaft install, and I know a few of you have contacted me about this because you're concerned about this guy right here. This is called a crush lead. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit sure, about this? Sure. So crush leads are designed so that when you torque the pinion nut, they actually collapse and they create a, a space between the two pinion bearings, the inner pinion bearing and the outer pinion bearing. In this case, we're talking about this bearing and this bearing. So it creates a space between these two and it, it creates a preload so that the bearings are making contact and have a certain amount of pressure so they don't move around. The, the downside is when you loosen this nut again to change a seal or to install a different yoke, then if you don't torque it down exactly right, these bearings have been seated and broken in and now you're going to apply new pressure and reposition them. And when you do that, it creates accelerated wear. If you go too tight, it can create a situation where not enough oil gets between the rollers and the race, or in this case, the balls in the race, and it burns up the bearing, seizes the bearing, and that's not a pleasant thing to deal with on the track. <laughs> in other words, a bad day. A bad day. So what did, this is kind of new and different. Um, as you can see here, most of the bearings that you would have seen would have been roller bearings, um, like barrel style, or yeah, what, so what do you call a, that? This is a tapered roller bearing, and uh, tapered roller bearings are, are really designed for heavy duty use. In other words, they control this position because they're tapered, so obviously you can't go that way, and this is pushing against it, and it also gives a lot of radial strength. In fact, the angle of these rollers kind of determines how much force it can take this way axially and how much force it can take radially. And so that's a, a design feature. So you know, you'll find some bearings with more taper and some with less taper depending on what characteristics they're trying to get. The 
these new bearings that are coming out, you're going to become, weird. you're going to see them more often. Now, what these are in 104 is to get that last little 0 .001 MPGs, right? So these are lower friction and less drag, and so that helps improve fuel economy. So you're going to see more and more of these, but they do not have the same capacity for load as the old school. This has more drag, but it takes higher loads. This has less drag, but it's not going to take as high a load. Is it because of the amount of surface area contact? Yeah, exactly. As you can see, there's a broad amount of contact. In fact, bearings that have more rollers are made to take even more force than ones with fewer rollers. So you can really tune this up in a lot of different ways by changing the rollers, changing the angle. And it's just a, it's a proven design. It's been around forever. And you get two of these opposed to one another, and it's a very rigid setup. These uh, are, 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 I'm sure, good bearings, but they're just not going to carry the same amount of load as a tapered roller bearing of comparable size. So they put, that's why they put two sets of rollers in here to try to increase that contact area. So this is clearly an upgrade on the Pro Rock 44 to go with this setup then? Yeah, in fact, that's all we use. We only use taper. We don't use any of these bearings because our customers are not interested in, in that, that minute amount of fuel economy. They're really interested in durability. So the taper bearings is, is what we stick with. Awesome. So a lot of the axles that we've been running, especially on the JK and now on the JL, uh, they've typically been a, a high pinion design. Um, do you happen to know what exactly is the difference between this versus the Pro Rock 44? Yeah, yeah so uh, the pinion on the JL 44s is 3 8 of an inch lower and it's also longer. So one of the reasons it's lower is for some of that efficiency that we talked about earlier. By making the pinion lower compared to axle center line, they can pick up some efficiency in the gears and, create, and have less friction. Less friction means a little bit, tiny bit better fuel economy. So the pinion on the JK gear sets is 3 eighths of an inch higher. It's also about half an inch shorter. So it lets your drive shaft be a little bit longer. The pinion being higher also improves your drive shaft ang angularity. And because the pinion is higher, well, even though there's a little more friction in the gear, it gives it a little more strength. So we, again, felt that the JK ring and pinion setup was better to go with than the JL. Okay, so now that we kind of deviated off course a little bit, we were talking about these crush leaves, but uh, what is the difference between this and this? So this is, a, this is a, a crush sleeve eliminator. It's a hardened piece of steel. It's been machined to take up the space between the two bearings, and we use shims to set the preload. So it's a little more labor to set up because I can't just adjust it by turning the pinion nut, but once it's set, if the customer later on needs to change a seal, or he needs to change a yoke, or he's working on his drive shaft and he wants to do something different, he takes the yoke on, but he can, all he's got to do is tighten this nut back down. It's, a, it's fail safe. So he can't disturb the bearing preload once I have this in there. He can disturb the bearing preload because this changes shape, and when he goes to tighten it again, it doesn't have the same resistance and it's not going to tighten in the same place. So there you have it. This is the reason why you would want to upgrade to a Pro Rock 44 JL, especially if you're running something like the Avantech 186 or what a lot of people call a Dana 30. Clearly the ring and pinion are bigger on the Pro Rock 44. You get heavier duty bearings and you get the crush sleeve eliminator, which is totally awesome. Yep. There you have it.